One of the great writers at Clean Technica recently shared with us something that I don't think many of you have seen. They talked about how Toyota's so-called incredible hybrid technology is actually ancient and, in fact, it's just straight rubbish. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Love to see you at Fully Charged Live. I'll be there in two days' time in Sydney, Australia for the biggest electric car show of the year period. Then I'd love to see you again in London in April this year in San Diego in October. Now I'm still running a GoFundMe campaign for my wife's cancer treatments. Uh, she's starting to see some positive results from the treatment we're getting here in Bangkok in Thailand. It's been amazing. Thank you guys so much for that. The link is in the description. Toyota claims it makes more electric cars than any other car company in the world. It also claims that there's only enough lithium in the world for every car to have a tiny one kilowatt hour battery. One kilowatt hour. Now that's obviously completely false. It's just a statistic fabricated by Toyota to justify the fact that their hybrids and gasoline cars are, well, better than having an EV because they don't have any compelling EVs. Due to the overwhelming and positive interest, Clean Technica says that according to Statista, Toyota has consistently produced and sold about 8 million cars a year for the past 20 years. All the hype about Toyota, is it legit or is it actually hot air? Is there any evidence Toyota circling the drain? And David Waterworth says, is there any evidence that Toyota is circling the drain? Which is basically what I'm saying. And this guy, David, who is an impressive author, says that I'm wrong. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. He says, as Paul and I have asserted here, should the Japanese automakers misjudge the timing of the transition to electric, it could have disastrous consequences for not only the automotive sector, but also the domestic economy and globally. On a number of times on this channel, I talked about how the Japanese economy is in dire straits. GDP will collapse. It will be in the minus by possibly 10 percentage points, which sounds drastic. More than likely, there will be an economic devastation in Japan over the next 10 to 20 years. It's inevitable, in my opinion. Now, David says that thankfully, according to Rethink Energy, it appears that the Japanese auto industry is starting to awaken to the urgent need to electrify and is taking tentative steps forward. The problem is here that I see with this, the Chinese have been just barging ahead at full steam while the Japanese have just said, no, 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 we'll hold off, we'll hold off. So can the Japanese and Toyota actually start, you know, get into this race and catch China, catch Tesla? Well, I say no. David says that Suzuki has announced it will be spending US $34.5 billion through fiscal year 2030 on R&D and capital spending to allow it to make the transition to producing EVs. The money will be split evenly between research and development into autonomous driving and electrification and battery manufacturing incorporating renewable energy facilities. Honda just announced that they're going to spend more than $40 billion between now and 2030 to try and play catch up. But some of that is marked for building rockets. Seriously, they're planning on building rockets. Some of that's marked for hydrogen plants. Some of it's for hydrogen cars. Some of it's for just, you know, making better hybrids. That's what Honda is doing. Suzuki intends to produce key cars in Japan by mid-2023. Obviously, the Wuling Hongwai Mini EV has been a very influential car. It's one of the world's best-selling electric cars, sometimes the best, depending on the year you're looking at. And it's not hard to see where the model has landed almost a million sales in the past few years. I mean, the average sales price is $6,000 US dollars, and it's actually pretty good. Suzuki's microcar will be marketed to urban commuters who do not require long distance capability. And Suzuki hopes to sell them for around 7,000 US dollars. That's amazing if they can do that and make a profit if they're making them in Japan. But the Japanese automaker is starting from a long way behind its Chinese competition. A long way. I say it's insurmountable. Let me know if you agree with that. Suzuki announced as well at the same time, it would continue R&D into hybrids and internal combustion engine vehicles. Suzuki justifies the continuance of developing internal combustion engines, citing a lack of charging infrastructure and concerns over raw material availability. Obviously, they've been listening to Toyota too much. Well, they are Toyota, aren't they? Yet, 
Hybrids are a very expensive strategy to follow. And as EV batteries get cheaper, hybrids will become standard. They already are. Look at the sales of hybrids in many countries around the world. They are declining rapidly. This split focus is exactly why Japanese companies like Toyota, Suzuki, Mazda, etc., are so far behind in EV production figures. So these companies from Japan are splitting their focus in numerous different areas. So are General Motors, unfortunately, so are Ford. But these companies are doing that. Whilst these Chinese electric car companies are dead set focused on manufacturing EVs only, production efficiency, how to get prices down, how to make better EVs, how to compete with the 100 other electric car companies in China. It's a battleground there. We've got the fiercest competition in China. While the Japanese are saying, yeah, well, we're taking a multi-pronged approach. We're going to do this, a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of that, a bit of this, a bit of this. Who do you know who does that successfully? I don't think anyone does. Imagine you hired someone to come and build the frame of your house, right? Imagine you hired a builder or a carpenter to come and do that. And then you found out that actually they only spend one day a week building houses. The rest of the week they're doing, Mondays they're a banker. Tuesdays they're um, making pizzas. On a Wednesday they are selling insurance. On a Thursday, yeah, they build houses on a Thursday. On a Friday they make YouTube videos. Yeah, you can see my point. Are the minor automakers finally letting go of Toyota's influential leadership in Japan? Suzuki didn't mention hydrogen in its R&D plans, and last November, Mazda announced investments in EV technology. Yet, Japan is at least five years behind BYD and Tesla in technology and manufacturing news. Now, I would actually strongly disagree with that. I'd say Japan is at least 10 years, maybe even 15 years behind, because they're not only behind in actual development, they're behind in producing the factories, the production lines, even having the product, but they're also behind in terms of their debt. Their debt sags over their head. They're old production lines, they're old facilities, they're old workers, they're old processes, they're old everything. That is something that slows you down. It drags you. It's like basically being in the ocean and having a sinker tied to your leg. Now, Clean Technica says it will take them another five years to bring even a second generation EV to market. And then they will also be a decade behind the Chinese and Tesla. Further, we strongly recommend not buying an EV that is not generation three or above. Nissan is planning to invest half a billion dollars into Renault's and Pierre Electric Vehicle Division. But at the same time, Renault has reduced its hold over Nissan by decreasing its voting power from 43% down to 15%. Renault will still profit from the alliance, but Nissan will gain more autonomy. But whether or not Nissan can actually start mass manufacturing EVs is anyone's guess. No one really knows. Sony and Honda have a joint venture to make EVs called Afila. Now they're making an expensive electric car that they believe won't have any real competitors. It'll just occupy some sort of magical niche where it'll be able to sell as many as they need to make a profit. Honda are providing the physical architecture of the vehicle. Sony will provide the software, focusing on infotainment features and self-driving capabilities. But Honda's major markets are China and North America. That's where most of their sales are. And Honda doesn't really have any good short-term strategy for those two markets. In fact, Honda doesn't really have any EVs at all at the moment. They have the Honda E, but it is only sold in a couple of countries and it's very expensive. Toyota, on the other hand, is committed to engaging the EV market with the BZ4. Fully charged vodcast presenter Jack Scarlett says Toyota's BZ4 is surprisingly good. However, the sales figures tell a different story. Toyota has sold about 600 in the US, seven in China, and 2,500 in Europe. In all, it is a very disappointing second generation car in capability and technology. In fact, yeah, I have to agree here with Clint Technica. I don't agree with Jack here at all. In fact, I think Jack is just saying this because he's being nice. Truthfully, the BZ4 is mediocre. Even Toyota engineers themselves agree it's not up to scratch. And the Europeans, they believe it's not to scratch either. In fact, there's a petition and there's several people, several journalists, a number of publications who have written to Toyota asking them why the range is 40% less what it should be, why the battery pack capacity appears to be 20% less than what Toyota says. There's some pretty serious problems with BZ4. It's been had its price reduced by around 10,000 US dollars in China. Now you can get it from 20 to 24,000 US dollars. Yeah, it's unfortunately a flop. Even the BZ3, 
Toyota's new car that is basically being manufactured by BYD has already had its price reduced significantly on the day of launch because of a lack of demand. So right now, 0.2% of Toyota's cars sold worldwide are electric. When will the pivot to EVs gather some stream for Toyota? As the leading Japanese automaker and one of the largest, or well, the largest automaker in the world, Toyota has a lot to lose and a lot to gain, but it only has a tiny little touch into the EV market. I mean, 0.2%. It's not even one of China's 50 best-selling electric car manufacturers. It just doesn't rank anywhere. In Japan, it is a lot of responsibility for the current situation. The key reason for that, Toyota's former CEO, who is now the president, the overlord of Toyota, obviously he is there because of his being the great grandson of the founder of the company, but he is the president of the Japanese automotive industry and he has led them here. He has a lot of influence over the Japanese automotive industry. Now, Toyota scientists justified their lack of manufacturing EVs by saying they assumed a shortage of lithium was coming and so needed to continue to produce hybrids. Now, today, the price of lithium has gone down by 40% over the last couple of months because actually there's more lithium than manufacturers need right now. In fact, there's a glut of batteries right now. There's more batteries than car manufacturers can take. That's the truth. This shows that Toyota has no real grasp on reality. They don't really know that there isn't a shortage of lithium, that there isn't in fact a shortage of batteries. The battery companies are actually moving and pivoting towards sodium batteries anyway. There's more than enough batteries to go around and that will never be an issue. Toyota doesn't actually appear to do any research on this. They seem to just look for facts that confirm their confirmation bias. Now, Toyota hopes that if they can just manufacture a compelling EV, that everything will be okay, it'll all be fine. But the reality is, there's a lot more that goes into this, a lot more to making an EV. Those include having a car be the internet of things, autonomous driving, elimination of the middleman, getting rid of dealerships to some degree at least, bottom-up EV-only design, making an EV platform that's only for EVs, not as a kind of a cover-all everything. Use it, for, use it for gas cars, use it for other hybrids, use it for EVs and just hope that it works. Then there's vertical integration in manufacturing. There's gigacasting. There's using structural battery packs. There's so many things that Toyota doesn't know about, doesn't do, doesn't seem all that interested in even finding out about. What about lithium-ion phosphate batteries? What about sodium lithium hybrid batteries? Now, Clean Technica says that the must have Musk method of vertical integration is the absolute opposite of Toyota's Kaizen and the distributed production method that Toyota has refined over the last 20, 30 years that many people believe would work. They're the most efficient company at producing gasoline powered cars, and they were. But now that we've moved to a different product, that's no longer the case. Now, considering the fact that Toyota still plans on only selling 20% of its cars as electric in 2030, what situation will they be in then? Will people be willing to buy a hybrid with nickel metal hydride batteries in 2030? I don't think so. Will people be willing to buy a hybrid that is primarily a gas car with a little bit of electrification in 2030? I don't think so. Will people be willing to buy gasoline or diesel only car from Toyota in 2030? highly unlikely. This idea that Toyota has this great technology that they use in their hybrids is false. The technology in their hybrids is perfectly adequate for 2018. In 2023, it's been far superseded. And Toyota has really nothing to replace it with. Even they have admitted that. Now let's just end with this. There is only one company in the world with 190 billion US dollars of debt. That, my friends, is Toyota. They are the most indebted company in the history of the planet. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.